Hey, Pocky, no. Hey. If you're anything like me, you've been watching all the new videos coming out about the new Apple M1 chip. And for the most part, it looks absolutely stunning, upgrading the MacBooks in really powerful ways. However, if you're even more like me, you may have recently just picked up a 16 inch MacBook or you may have bought another MacBook and it might feel like it's slap bang at the wrong time. If you have, then this video is for you. If you're a little bit unsure what the M1 processor is and what it means and why everyone's so fussed about it, let me give you a really, really super brief rundown. Basically, Apple have been using Intel processors in their Macs since about 2005. So every Mac that you've bought or used since then will be running on Intel. But as of 2020, Apple have seen so much performance and battery and graphical powers coming from their mobile chips, so the ones that power the iPhones, that they've decided to take the chips out of here and to put them into the MacBook range and to leave Intel behind completely. The benefits of this are a huge boost to battery life, better graphics power, better processing power, instant waking, and also even under heavy loads, the MacBook won't run hot and the fans will only switch on if it really, really needs to. The first line of these new Macs is the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro 13, and the Mac Mini range, and Apple are planning to bring over every single Mac to Apple Silicon within two years. So yeah, the 16-inch MacBook Pro that I literally just bought is looking pretty stupid, or is it? The M1 is an ARM-based system, and without getting too technical, it's a lot different from what normally powers a laptop. It means most applications probably won't work on it out of the box. However, that's not a big concern as Apple can run those apps using a translation layer called Rosetta 2, which allows the new M1 Max to run any Intel applications until developers release an M1 optimized version. You would imagine that means a lot of headaches and annoyances in the early game, but Rosetta 2 is proving to be so good that it's running some apps translated better than they ever ran normally on Intel, which is just mad. Obviously it's not perfect though, apps like Chrome don't run particularly well at the moment, and other really big creative apps like Photoshop and Premiere Pro haven't got optimized versions for the M1 yet. However, when that does happen and when those apps do come along, you'll see huge improvements across the board thanks to that chip. A really good example of an optimized app is Final Cut Pro, which from what I've seen is cutting through compressed H.265 4K and even 8K footage with no problems at all, which is amazing to see on a small laptop like this. Hot take, Final Cut Pro has always run really well on Mac. It's always been a super optimized app, so there's no real surprise here, but it is still incredible to see. Despite all of the amazing things that the M1 is bringing to the table, there are some limitations compared to Intel stuff that we're used to at the moment. For instance, you can only get 16 gigabytes of RAM and two USB-C ports, and I'm less fussed about the RAM because I think compared to what we're used to, it might work differently with the architecture, so that's less of a big deal. But having two USB-C ports is actually quite limiting for some people. I know that now that I'm on the 16 inch and I've got four ports, I find it really hard going back to two because I just started using them all, all the time. So it's a shame it can't support those, at least not yet. Apple also touted the M1 chip is going to be much better graphically than the MacBook Pros it's replacing, and for the most part that seems to be holding up very true. I was never overly impressed with the Intel Iris stuff that you used to get in the MacBook Pros, so that's really awesome to see. However, they did pull support for external graphics cards, which is a real shame, and they didn't mention how the M1 chip holds up against dedicated cards you'll find in the 16-inch MacBooks and the iMacs and upwards. I can only imagine that means they don't quite match up. However, I do hear that the M1 can hold up to the base 16-inch graphics card, which is the Radeon 5300, which is really, really impressive. I'm sure the M2 or the M1X or whatever they end up calling it will support much better graphics performance though, or they'll start supporting dedicated cards that Apple are okay with. So for now, I think graphically I'm good with what I've got on my 16 inch, which is the Radeon 5500M. Another thought that's been rolling around in my head is the newer Mac Pro series from 2019. These machines are built from the ground up to be the most powerful Macs ever made, and they're all based on Intel. 
Bear in mind that these computers can go all the way up to 28 core processors and 1.5 terabytes of RAM and support really large heavy duty graphics cards. So whatever Apple Silicon chip they're gonna put in here is gonna to have to be mental and support way over 16 gigabytes of RAM and support some form of dedicated graphics card so it can measure up. So taking all of this into account brings me back round to that initial question. Do I regret picking up this 16 inch MacBook Pro this late in the Intel game? And the simple answer is no. This is still a fantastic laptop that will serve its purpose well over the next few years. I think it's worth remembering if you've recently picked up any Mac, you're getting the very best Intel Macs that Apple has ever made. So that's 15 years of innovation, iteration, adapting, and making sure it's the best it can possibly be. If you get an M1 MacBook, you're buying into the first generation of a product, so you're opening yourself up to all of those teething pains that you would feel with any first device. Look, the likelihood of this two year transition process failing is so slim. Apple is one of the biggest companies in the world and this new generation of Macs running the M1 processor will undoubtedly be a success. And the fact is the M1 chip is already running so well, even with Rosetta 2 translating those unoptimized apps. My usual advice is don't buy a product on the promise of what it might be, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't excited to see where this M1 chip takes Apple and what sort of new designs we'll see for the iMac and the MacBooks in the future. And I have to admit, if I was looking at getting a MacBook Air or a 13 inch MacBook Pro at the moment, I would probably take the plunge and get the M1 version right now. So that rounds off this video. Overall, I'm still really happy with my 16 inch MacBook Pro. As I mentioned, it's still an absolute beast and is gonna be great for editing and all the things I need it to be. But as ever, I'd like to hear your guys' opinions. So let me know in the comments below what you think about the new M1 stuff. And if you're going to grab one, let me know too. That'd be great. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel. It helps me out massively and it means I can keep making videos like this one. Pop a like on the way out too. That'd be massive. And I'll see you all in the next one.